Hi, this is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. The plugin version of Particle Illusion offers a lot of features not available in the standalone app. One of the big ones is Beat Reactor. Beat Reactor is a way to change parameters based off audio, and we can use this to create highly reactive particle effects. But in this tutorial, we're going to be doing something a little bit more subtle. I'll show you how to create a simple particle system in Particle Illusion and transform it into something much more stylish with Beat Reactor and Boris Effects Continuum. All right, so here we are in After Effects with what's going to be probably close to our final comp. And in terms of layers, there's not a lot to it. So let's get started with a fresh composition here. I've got my audio, which uh, let's have a little look at the waveform here. There we go. We've got our audio. Let's have a little listen. And we'll probably hear this music a couple of times as we move through this tutorial. And I've got a video layer. And it's just a layer solid, but in black. So let's apply our particle illusion to this clip. Now, most of the work that we're going to be doing is going to be in the Beat Reactor section, because we're going to be using the music through Beat Reactor to drive our particles. But currently, we have no particles to drive. So let's launch Particle Illusion and make our base particle system. Now with the presets open, I'm just going to start with a basic emitter. So I'm just going to double click that to load it onto the stage and I can now safely close my presets. If we play this back, you can see that it is really the most basic of all basic presets. It's a small little particle type being emitted from a point and the velocity is quite small. So we're not really even seeing a lot of movement in the, in the area there. Let's fix this. So we want our particles to start on the left hand side and move over to the right hand side. So in the basic emitter, I'm just going to take my position and drag this over to the left. I could even do it in the parameters over here. Make sure we're coming over to the left. Let's now turn the velocity up briefly just so we can see what's happening here. And so our particles are now being emitted from this point over on the left hand side. We want to make sure that they're all going to be emitted in one single direction. So for that, I'm just going to have a look at the emission range on the emitter, and I'm going to take that down to zero. So now all of the particles are going to be emitted in the same direction. Okay, so let's turn the velocity in the emitter back down to 100 because we're going to be doing all of the interesting stuff in the actual particle over here. So I'm going to click on my particle and the first thing I'm going to do is come down here and change my size and velocity up to about 100, making things a little bit more visible. Up at the top of the viewer in the stage, we have this heads up display button. I'm going to turn that off so we can just see the particles here. We're not going to be dragging anything around. We're just going to have everything emitted from this one point and we're going to come over and we're going to change the shape type. Now I can either do it up in the properties here, or if you're using Particle Illusion 2022.5 or above, I can just double click on the shape in the node there. Let's move this over to the side, and I'm looking for something a little bit more kind of graphical. Let's have a little look, see what we can see what we can find. And one of the things that I like most about Particle Illusion is we have a large library of assets to choose from. So I can usually find something that I want uh, built directly into the library. Maybe we'll just take something like the Sabre, because this is this is quite nice and uh, and tall. And we'll apply that. If we want to change our mind later, we absolutely can. And now we have this in place. I just want to stretch it up a little bit. So this is why I can come down to size. So over on the left hand side, I'm going to turn off lock size aspects because I just want to change up the size Y, just so that they're stretched out a little longer. Now, if we play this back again, the particles themselves don't really move very far across the uh, across the screen. And there are two things that are controlling this. The first one is the speed at which they're moving, which we can change with velocity. But if I move velocity up too much, you'll see we get a lot of separation between these things. And that's not exactly the look we're going for. The other thing we want to change is the life. 
So if I change my life up, this is gonna tell us how long these particles are going to live. So if I set this up to 75, you can see that the particles are now living longer and getting further across the frame. So let's come back to velocity now and we'll just increase the velocity so the stuff's moving forward a bit faster. Actually, I'll probably move this even faster here. Maybe I'll take the velocity up to a thousand and then I can take my life down. So we get a little bit of balance on, on either side. So now we've got the speed, but we've also got them stopping before they head off the edge of the screen. They're a little bit thin. So let's uh, increase the, the size of those. I'll bring that up to about 200. And we can even increase the number of these as well so we get a bit of crossover. This may not seem like a lot, but this is the sort of start that we want when we're gonna drive most of the animation through Beat Reactor. Now, obviously I'm not a big fan of just gray on gray action. So I'm gonna come up to my colors and change those colors up. And we can do this on the left-hand side under the particle properties. Or again, if you're using 2022.5, I could just double click on the node and it brings up my gradient editor. So for my first stop here, let's, uh, what should we do? Let's turn this to a blue. And over on the other side, let's bring this in and maybe make this an orange of some sort. Yeah, there we go. And if we move up a little bit, I can turn on intense. So that as the particles move over each other, they sort of blend together as if they were, were light. Uh, so that's kind of nice. I'm also going to turn on MIP mapping as well because we are doing quite a bit of scaling with these particles. Okay, so now if I turn up my number, you'll see what I mean by the, the light intensifying. Now I just want to show you something. If we go back into the, the emitter, by default the emitter's um, opacity is set to 50 on this, on this basic emitter. I'm going to set this up to 100 because I want to control the opacity really with the particle type not with the emitter type. And I can do that with the alpha here. So I can set a couple of stops on the alpha. Let's sort of fade this out to, well, let's fade this out to zero over life. Let's bring the number up. So we have a, a couple of little streaks there as well. Okay, so now you can see the particles starting to change over life. And this concept of over life is really important when we're creating up our particle systems because it means how the particle looks and how the particle acts is going to be different over the course of its life it's born over here on the left hand side and it is born blue it lives a certain amount of time which is what we control with the life down here and as it goes through it's going to change color because that's what we've said over here it's going to change color over life and it's also going to get slightly more transparent over life as well before it fades out now it's not just things like color and alpha that we can control over life. If we take a look down at the bottom here, we have a lot of other things that we can control over life as well, including size and velocity. Now, when we're adding keyframes to properties that are over life, I just hit R to reset our graph and take a look at what the scale of our graph is. Our scale changes between zero and one. So zero is when our particles are born, one is when the particles die. So if I come to 0.5, that's halfway through the particle's life. I can add a, uh, a keyframe here, maybe I'll add a Bezier keyframe, and I can just bring this down so that when the particle dies, it's gonna get smaller. Maybe we'll, we'll keep that to about 30%. I can change my final keyframe there to a Bezier as well and then just get a nicer looking curve. So we scrub through here. As our particles live, not only does it change color, but it also gets smaller. We can also do this with velocity over life. Um, and I'm not gonna do anything too clever with this. All I'm gonna do is take the velocity at its death down to zero. So it's gonna start off quite fast and then sort of just lose all of its velocity at the end of its life and because every particle lives for the exact same amount of time everything's clustering up in the uh, the middle here what i can do at this point is maybe just bring the velocity up a little bit so that we maintain this nice little gap going between there and there 
this is probably it for for where i need it to be you know it doesn't look particularly interesting right now but but maybe if you tilted your head 90 degrees it looks a little bit like a sunrise but for now i'm happy to bring this back into after effects and see what we can do in beat reactor so i'm going to hit apply come back into after effects and let's add in our beat reactor now in the particle illusion plugin i'm going to enable beat reactor i'm going to open this up and the first thing i have to do is choose the sound layer now because we're working after effects we can choose a host sound layer i'll choose this one here if we're working in other hosts then we just import a file um, an aif f file to uh, to work with so we're going to use this graph to choose what sort of frequencies we're going to take to sample from to drive the effect so we have our base over in the the sort of red area we have our midtones in the greens and we have our treble over in the blues and i'm actually going to turn off particle illusion for a second just because i want to show us this in a very simple straightforward way i'm going to add the the standalone beat reactor you don't have to do this i just want to uh, show it so that we are in no doubt about what we're looking at and let's open up my audio spectrum options and just make the resolution of this a little bit higher and if we take a look at this as it plays through we can start to identify frequencies and instruments from the the peaks here if we take a look at this peak here this peak goes up and down with the drum boom 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 just gonna leave the mouse there and just play this through so let's turn our particle illusion back on and let's come over we can actually increase the spectrum resolution there as well so let's see if we can find see there there's that there's that kick again let's close that up and come in and decide what we're going to be looking at so we apply beat reactor to certain parameters now if i click on the drop down menu we can see the parameters that we can affect and if i go about halfway through you can see this life and this is the reason we were looking at a lot of that stuff over life because change to the lifespan of a particle is the easiest way to animate multiple things simultaneously so i'm going to take my sample corner and i'm going to sample where this drum actually is right about there let's bring this in here and let's open up our audio options a and this is going to tell us uh, what it's going to be doing so at the moment it's adding to the value we can subtract from it but i'm just going to replace that value because as particles are born i want the lifespan of that particle to be reliant on how loud this kick is uh, when they're born and i'll just render out the first five seconds i'm probably taking in like at the very start there's a lot of uh, a lot of action happening within these frequencies see if there's anything i can do to minimize that a little bit in a second but you can see as the kick drum hits over on the right hand side we have the the relative number the percentage bar basically of what's going to happen if this is filled up all the way it's going to be 100 because of what we have our output uh, maximum set to and if it's not filled up at all it's going to be at zero so we can change this up so it only affects things when they're really being hit now let's let's have a little look and change some of the other ones as well so we can apply beat reactor to other parameters so maybe we also apply it to a number and we do the same thing instead of adding to that number we replace if we come down to the sampler instead of using that box percentage we link this to the one that we've applied in a as well so we're using the same sampler to drive life and number let's 
kind of interesting. And we can drive this in a different way as well. So we can set a minimum number. So it's never gonna go below 20. And we can also drive our maximum up a little bit. So when it really hits, we get a nice big boost. If you're finding the graph display a bit distracting, we can always turn that off as well now. So under show graph, I can turn this to no. Maybe I think the number should should stay down a little bit. I don't like the burning out too much there. So I'm going to take my number down. So we get some nice, nice sort of streaks, but we're not burning out, which is probably close to 100, actually, to be fair. 95, yeah, there we go. We can also change the fall off here. So instead of immediately falling off, we have a little bit more of a softer landing. So we can do that with quadratic soft as well. So that over half a second, it just sort of falls down a little bit. Maybe half a second's a bit too long for this music. So I'll react it a little bit faster. 0.2 should be fine there. And we've got one more parameter we can use this to. Uh, we might as well use it. Let's go to size maybe. And we'll do the same thing. We'll replace the value excellent and uh, i will change the box percentage to linking that to the original and maybe this time we have a minimum of 50 percent i will do a quadratic hard fall off again maybe over 0.2 Excellent. So that's that's our base. The, uh, the drum, boom, boom, boom. You know, we've we've still got full flexibility on this, but I think this is good enough for now. I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to make one small change to it, because what I want to do is not pick up the bass notes this time. I want to pick up some of the melody a little bit. So let's let's take a look in Beat Reactor again and have a little look what area we're we're actually looking for. There we go, and that's that green here. Do 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 do. It sort of moves along there. That's the dot. There we go. So we're going to be looking for we're going to be looking for that. Just an off beat reactor, the actual beat reactor there, and we'll turn particle illusion back on. I'm going to set beat reactor to show that graph again. Yes, please. And let's come in and choose an area. That's around about where the green is. Now we're going to need to take in a few more different uh, different frequencies because you know that does travel a little bit further. So if I can find where it's it's got the do 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 do. Yeah, it's probably around about there. So let's move over here somewhere. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'll leave everything else as it is. All I really wanted to do was just change the uh, the range. Uh, and let's turn our show graph back to zero. Now we could come in and change the colors within uh, Particle Illusion, or we could change the tint strength here as well. But I'm just gonna add another effect, which is the hue saturation, and just spin that around a little bit. Okay. Let's set the blend mode on this one to add. Turn on our other Particle Illusion layer and i'm gonna hit t to bring up the opacity and just set my opacity to 50. so let's see what uh what happens when we render this out now there we go and this is starting to come together now we can see how it's reacting to the different frequencies and we can start to build on this just a little bit more and I'll just come on to the uh, the next step. Now, my next step for, for dealing with these sorts of things is just to add in another couple of little effects, just to kind of add a little bit uh, of interest to it and just to sort of finish it. So in this first layer, I'm gonna use some lens distortion, just so it looks a little bit different as it moves across the screen. 
And for that, I'm going to use BCC plus lens distortion. Often this is used to, to fix kind of fisheye lenses or, you know, wide angle lenses or to, to wrap things around a CRT monitor, something like that. Uh, I'm going to use this in a slightly more stylized kind of way and just bring this out. I don't probably don't need too much. Maybe just taking this minus minus two, minus two and a half. Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Minus two and a half it should be absolutely fine. Then I'll add an, another adjustment layer. Uh, and I'll, I'm, what should I do with this? Just something to, to add a bit of stylization and color to it. Uh, let's come to our stylize and maybe we'll use the BCC plus prism effect. Uh, come into the effects editor. See if we've got a nice preset that's gonna get us in the right direction. I kind of, actually I kind of like this this look, this horizontal separation look. Maybe it's a little bit too too much. I'll bring the global transform down. Bring it up a little bit there. Hit apply on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just getting a bit of chromatic aberration almost uh, coming out of that. Uh, and the final thing is to always add in a bit of glow. So I'm going to come into film style, film glow, BCC plus film glow. Again, we'll look at the effects editor take a little look to see if there's a a preset that we like soft amber glow it's kind of nice text wide glow i know this isn't text but actually that's pretty uh pretty nifty yeah i kind of like text wide glow let's uh you know there's there's no mistake in what's happening here uh maybe i'll take the glow intensity down just a little bit it's uh, around about 160 goodness okay that's yeah sure why not <laughs> why not make it loud and proud let's give a preview of that see see what's going on see if we do have to tweak anything else up yeah i think that i think that's looking gonna look pretty good cool and just just take a look at this frame here and if I come into uh, Pascal Illusion, I just want to remind you, all of this is being created through this emitter. And the changes in the animation that we're getting are coming solely through Beat Reactor. And if we take a little look at the final render now, we can see how we can take a black solid, create an emitter in Particle Illusion where the animation is happening over life and then use Beat Reactor to control the lifespan of those particles to create a much more finished effect. I hope you found this useful. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. If you'd like to learn more about Particle Illusion, Continuum, or any of the other Boris Effects products, head on over to boriseffects.com where you'll find all the information you'll need, plus the ability to download a free trial version, all at borisoffects.com. <laughs>